So I'm a bit late to this discussion, but I thought I would uh, throw my penny in to the ring, throw my hat into the ring, put my penny in, on the topic of um, shields and shield walls in the early medieval period and were shield walls a thing, how were shields used, etc, etc. So um, I'm going to try and specifically keep the topic to the northwest of England, to particularly inside Cumbria, to where that is appropriate, bearing in mind looking at the lack of the general evidence in the, in the county and that, but I thought I'd throw my penny in. This is going to be a very casual conversation. The types of fighting that's going on, we need to look at what specific combat was going on on a regular basis and how that would affect and influence it. So the majority of the combat and the fight conflicts that was going on would be what I refer to as small warfare, small scale warfare. So that'd be where like, like um, cattle raids, maybe there's um, two, uh, two farms, there's villages that have fallen out, they're going to fight each other over maybe a, land, a small land dispute or um, somebody got murdered by somebody, etc, etc. So by far throughout the period, that was the most prolific forms of warfare. Um, raiding comes into this category as well. But in this sort of warfare, you're talking about a dozen people fighting each other. So like, you know, like 10 to 30 people maximum, really. So um, 30 at the high end was most likely quite lower than that, bearing in mind that in this sort of type of warfare, it wasn't like you, losing sides, village or farmstead wouldn't be completely wiped out and it would just be the, 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 the warriors, the people more prone towards warfare would be fighting each other in these circumstances. There were, um, so that's going to be very, very different to mass battles where the, where the Thane would gather his, um, would gather the fjord together, gather his militia together and march off in an army where you know, a couple hundred people might end up fighting each other. Those two very, very different beasts. And we're going to be diving into both of them. So small warfare. Small warfare, where it's just maybe a dozen against another dozen people, is going to be wildly different. And in that, I can see the argument for a shield wall not being used by being, being outflanked and that. So the way that I'm being out outflanked and easily to bro break apart so in that form of combat I can imagine it being a lot more like um, where you have whoever's leading them stood there and there's guys around them and you'll you know through people toss each other maybe try and talk things out and then rush in I can imagine that being quite quick where you rush in on one side with lose a nerve and run on the other or run, maybe they get pursued maybe they wouldn't or um, you know that, that, that's how I imagine them there. I think there'll be a lot more dueling or people working together. Maybe still quite close together to keep themselves protection, but then keeping more bad and winning out. And that I don't think it is shield war, so forming rim to rim in that situation or overlapping. I think that um, in that scenario, you wouldn't do that because you'd just be too easy to move people to move around your outflank. Your opposing force could split into two and come around your side of your or send a few of the skirmish in front of you while one people surge around one side. So um, I don't think that that would be done in that and you want to be quick. So particularly if you're going on a cattle raid or if you're going on a cattle raid for example or raiding for any other thing, you're not going to stand and fight them anyway. You're going to rush in, you're going to have maybe some people go and cover them where you grab the cattle and then run off with them and get over back over to your side, over the fell to your side of the valley or back over to your corpse or whatever before that they could really muster a response to you. I think in mass battles where it's anywhere from like a couple of hundred up to a thousand people, then you I think shield walls would have been formed because you've got enough people where you can actually anchor the shield wall from like a river or a forest and I'd run all the way across to another anchored point or you can extend it with skirmishes. And it's again another major point for shield walls that people very well talk about is command and control. A bunch of people running around in general mobs it's very hard to get to do anything where they're shoulder to shoulder it's easy to pass messages down the line and that and for another uh other peoples around the world have used similar formations or accept it and they work so they clear so that way then and we've got the evidence we talk about it in the sagas and in um, anglo-saxon chronicles about them fighting in shield war it makes sense we've got enough bodies they can just extend a huge line across of unbroken walls and they've then got to penetrate 
and it's easy to resist arrow storms. Oh, there was that coming. But yeah, there was made it easier to resist them. Just with the more numbers as well, it's harder to outflank it. It's much harder. Because if they end up trying to outflank you, you can always extend your own line out. If you've got the people, well, well enough trained people for it with that. So, yeah. so I talk about finding evidence from it. I've always touched on this slightly. But the biggest piece of evidence that I like, especially which is local for my area in the northwest of Britain, that is the uh, Gosforth Hugback Graves, where you shield under the shield walls in rim to rim. So this is my main defensive argument for the use of a shield wall being used. This Hogback Grave in a uh, Gosforth Church. As you can see, the zoom in. I've got the figures here. Each with a shield there, overlapping, covering. You can see from what size those shields are, I assume they're all standard, just about half of their opponents, their comrades. You can see the heads there. The press and the spears pointing up like that. They're stood identically close to them. Don't think you can quite make it out, but here you can see a spear and another warrior stood there out in front of the wall as the wall continues over there. Of these hogback graves. Another thing I hear talks about a lot is that the um, shields in the period of the early medieval shields were quite thin, about eight millimeters thinner on average. So people say, yep, yeah. and they've done tests of it before, which are good when you do more of them, where you attack it with a weapon and you smash it apart. And you say, well, there you go, you can't withstand it, it's only eight millimeters thick. So clearly, it couldn't have been like the um, so clearly, it couldn't withstand it. I've got two problems with that. First problem is. Okay, you can smash a shield apart, but you're not. But while you're hacking that, that shield apart, even if it takes one or two, a couple of blows, so there's going to be somebody else facing you, multiple people facing you, you know, who are going to be trying to smash your face to pieces with those same weapons. So you need to, I think, you, rather than trying to hack at the opponent's shield, even if you take one or two blows, anybody who's in any form of like fencing, HEMA, um, reenactments, played with toy sticks in the yard against your brother or your sisters or whatever then knows that three blows is an extremely long time in a in a fight where we all bring those blows down and hacking that shield apart one jab at your face and you're gone so it's like well yeah you're going to try and and when you bring those blows down you're extending yourself so your arm is physically going over your shield and out in front of you or if you come from the side you're still extending that hand above it where a blade could just come in smash into your hand and that's your livelihood gone that's you you know <laughs> basically almost reliant then if, if you especially if you lose your hand you basically then rely on the charity of your neighbors to survive plus you, you know so are you going to risk extending your hand away or you go for a kill shot or a shot that could possibly disable them or to try and manage to hack away that shield another thing is if we look at other people let's say the romans Every day accepted the Romans fought by standing in lines with the shields touching and they're using the shields to take the brunt of the attack before they step forward and stab them or you know but the Roman shields were made up of three layers of two millimeter wood so if I'm wrong then correct me but that means that on average they're thinner than the Viking shields but you accept that bear in mind they're longer, they're curved as well, which I imagine that curvature of them would probably help a lot with deflecting the blows. So, and like, I know people don't like doing this, taking a different time period, and sort of having a different time period into a different culture and applying it to try and support another cultural problem. I know that's not particularly great history, historian, I don't know. But, so why can they do that with a slightly thinner shield, but you don't accept it with a slightly thicker shield? So, the, and as well, barrel groups had multiple shields, so they clearly accepted their shields when they get smashed to pieces. So then, you know, and so I wonder if you could cycle each people out, so somebody could quickly put out a shield wall, which is probably is a very dangerous maneuver. And then somebody slots in, so they can get a new shield or shield and pass forward, which again, to drop your shield, even if it, I suppose it was hacked apart, it probably won't make that much difference, but to drop it and to reach back and to get another one. So, Throughout this conversation, I've been touching on it and drawing the stuff that I've experienced when I'm doing my reenactments. I, I, I've like 
in the Viking Society, I've been to reenactments where it's from five people in a very local display, what I classify as small war to 30 or up to a thousand people being on the field. And what a game from that. I remember when it was one show where it was a large number, I can't remember how many combatants, I think about 800 people in the field. Might be a bit high, might be less than that, I can't mind. But it was God Manchester show and it was multiple society shows and we were paired with some people, I can't remember what part of the country were, I can't remember where they are. They were great lads, they were great fun, I ended up drinking with them that evening. But anyway, we fought and they didn't, they said shield rules weren't a thing and they did that claim. Fine, it's an argument. We were going to be in shield wall, about 20 people in it, the opposing shield wall come towards and they said try and go around it. Now that opposing shield wall rushed us very quickly, which again is a harder thing to get people to do if they're not properly trained and when it's an actual combative scenario. And them coming towards us and they say oh go around it and each time we tried to go around them because we fought against them three times they just steamrolled us came in too quick and killed us before we could do it and they had two of their experienced warriors in the flanks who could skirmish away and hold them back until they'd overrun the majority of us and at that point they broke apart out of the shield wall and killed the rest of us now me and my brother and my cousin decided for the third time we are going to form a shield wall so we formed the shield wall and we were the last to die now that's telling <laughs> so I think that there is definitely some merit in it having said that though obviously the cotton using any any form of people who were uh, whether it's over from Hema to the full contact her stuff to the battle of the nation full contact stuff to the european reenactments to the british like the viking side of reenactments to fencing all of the martial arts you can only simulate an actual fight and stimulate what's going on because they all exist within some basic parameters but the simple fact is we're not trying to kill each other for example um in the in the reenactments i do you don't go f there's no face hits because we don't wear any face protection like i know him that they have fencing masks on so they can go for the face but i highly but if obviously if, they, if it was a legal hit to go to the face i think it'd be fighting would be completely different and everybody would die instantly and some of that i want to experiment on so the conclusion I've, that I've come to on the whole topic is that shield walls are situational. Like any other form of combat or weapon and like anything and any other form of military tactic, it is situational when you're going to use it. I think they were used commonly in mass battles, but when there were where there was hundreds of people fighting each other, but if, if it was just a small raid or a small inter-community conflict, then I don't think they might they might not have been used, may not have been because they weren't that useful. As well, I love to see any form of experimentation going on with it, where we get like authentic weapons and attacking authentic shields with them. That's just great. We need to do more of that, and as well, experimenting with different like fight. Obviously, putting the reenactments and the different like fighting styles throughout. Like you can never really get a perfect scenario where to accurately demonstrate it. But what I really want to do is have a go, put some fencing masks on, have a go with a shield wall, where you can thrust at people's faces and see what and see how different that makes things so in conclusion i think that the argument is that is it situational it is i think there were things but i think it was situational they definitely didn't do it religiously every single time but in my opinion it definitely happened